All right, uh, <clears throat> I'm Sean. Uh, this is my first tech talk, so I'm glad to be here. I uh, just want to give a brief overview of a new web API uh, that you might or might not be familiar with. Uh, the Intersection Observer API uh, aims to solve an age-old problem with uh, the browser. So uh, we want to perform an action based on an element's position in the viewport. For example, uh, you have images dozens of images off page, uh, below the fold, uh, on load. And uh, to be more performant, you want to make sure that uh, you can load those images in only when the user reaches them. Uh, now, you might tell me, Sean, come on. We have an answer for this. Just attach the listeners to scroll and test against each and every one of those dozens of elements. Well, that obviously. Sounds a bit wrong. We want to do this more efficiently. Uh, you might still say, Sean, there's a solution. You can throttle it a little bit. Use a request animation frame to ensure that our tests are only run uh, every so often. But again, we have a better solution than that. So the Intersection Observer API is a relatively new uh, API that is now uh, available in all evergreen browsers but for Safari. Uh, it is asynchronous, so that means it does not block the main thread as uh, the page is being loaded. It is also very easy to implement, uh, unlike some of the solutions for lazy loading uh, that you might find elsewhere. Uh, basically, we instantiate our new intersection observer with a callback and a set of options. The options are optional. Uh, the root is default to the viewport. It's basically your frame uh, that each of the elements will test against. You have a root margin, which is something to extend uh, your frame uh, if you want to test against. Instead of if your window bottom is right here and you want to test against down below, uh, just add 50 pixels onto that bottom margin, uh, and you can do that. <clears throat> the threshold is uh, the percent in which the element is intersecting your frame. Uh, so it takes an array of numbers, uh, defaults just to zero. For the most part, uh, it, it does give you a lot of flexibility. There's some really crazy things uh, you can see that they've done on uh, uh, Mozilla. Mozilla Developer Network, uh, but what I'll be showing you shortly will be a really simple implementation. Our callback it takes two arguments, uh, entries, and the observer itself. For uh, so when the callback is ran, it loops through each of your entries and allows you to form specific actions on each element. So at the bottom there, we've got uh, just passing a set of uh, nodes to our observer, telling it to keep track of each of these. And then inside, uh, each entry uh, has a set of properties that allow for a lot of options of uh, testing. This isn't uh, exclusively for lazy loading. It's just uh, the easiest example. Uh, that I have for it. Uh, in our demo, we'll just be using the uh, is intersecting that returns uh, true or false. Is it uh, meeting the uh, bounds of the intersection? So a quick demo. I tested this just an hour ago and found uh, that what I was originally using had gone down. I don't know if anyone is familiar with Phil Murray. Yeah. Uh, it is apparently down, so I've replaced it uh, with Place Kitten. So uh, up in the top left here, everything is appearing fine. Uh, just click the scroll listener. It works. OK. So does the Intersection Observer. Exact same thing appearance-wise. The important thing is that it is significantly more performant. So let's uh, go back here. 
got the cache uh, disabled, so hopefully nothing's going to be too funky. I've got in DevTools the CPU slowed down so we can have a better view of the effect. Stop. And I didn't hit the button. That would help. Let's try that one more time. Start. So we can see in uh, Chrome DevTools uh, performance tab, uh, just that scrolling down took 410 milliseconds of scripting time. Uh, obviously, my CPU is slowed down, so uh, it depends on what device you're using and what other scripts you have running on the page. Uh, but that could be costly for a significant number of images. Let's try the same thing with Intersection Observer. And we've got a whole 84 milliseconds. Uh, so obviously, that those tests are still being run in the background, but they're not blocking main thread, and uh, will result in a significantly more performant web page, uh, especially on a, uh, uh, a less efficient uh, device or on a yeah on a, a less less efficient device. A couple caveats uh, that we should cover. The spec is not technically final. Uh, it is uh, basically implemented in everything but Safari. Uh, but there's always room for change. Uh, support is also not universal. Like I said, Safari, uh, it's in progress. I11 is abandoned, essentially. <laughs> and of course, for some reason, Samsung has decided not to implement one of the properties. Uh, hopefully, they'll fix that. Uh, if you want to see uh, these slides, uh, you can visit my GitHub. It's SWBennett06. Uh, I have also have the demo up there that you can play around with. I'd recommend the uh, MDN docs. Uh, the David Walsh blog also did a great article that uh, went into a much more detail on the problems uh, with the implementation and uh, why you might not want to push it into production just yet. Uh, but there is a polyfill available that is functional back to IE7. Uh, so you can take it or leave it. Anyway, that's, that's everything. Any questions I can answer? Great.